On the 31st of August, 161 AD, Lucius Aelius Aurelius Commodus was born. Becoming emperor at the age of 16, he would rule Rome with an iron fist and went down as one of the most despised and hated rulers in all of Roman history. Such a terrible figure must have been created from terrible circumstances, right? Well, you might be surprised to learn that his father was Marcus Aurelius himself. But how did that happen? We'll get into that later, but first we need to know what went wrong with Commodus. His father, Marcus Aurelius, known as the last of the five good emperors, reigned for 19 years. His genius helped veer Rome away from chaos and downfall, as he fought in the Roman Parthian War over Armenian territory in the east, as well as Germanic barbarians in the north, leading a victorious campaign in the Marcomannic Wars. Unfortunately, as we're going to learn later, his son Commodus did not possess the same wit and intelligence that his father had. Because of Aurelius' constant warring, Commodus was mostly raised by nurses, doctors, and teachers. He was later named co-emperor with his father at the age of 16, and became the sole ruler of the Roman Empire at Aurelius' passing two years later, thus becoming the most powerful man in the world at age 18. Taking over the reins from the great Marcus Aurelius was no easy feat, but it turned out worse than you could ever imagine. In many ways, Commodus as emperor ruled in stark contrast to his father, while Marcus Aurelius was determined and dedicated to his duties as emperor, casting aside his personal pleasure. Commodus was hedonistic and vain. He forcefully created a cult of personality centered around himself, portraying himself as a god amongst men. Believing himself to be the reincarnation of Hercules, Commodus ignored the administration of the empire and fought in gladiatorial games. In the arena, he turned the odds in his favor, fighting against people with disabilities and slaughtering wild beasts. The focus was definitely not on ruling his empire, leaving Rome in the hands of his power-hungry friends. Eventually, Commodus became his own downfall, as his plan to execute his mistress and powerful senators was exposed, fittingly leading to him being strangled to death by a gladiator. The reason for this contrast of the two men's reigns may lie in the difference of their upbringings. Unlike Commodus, Marcus Aurelius was not the son of a previous emperor. His family was well off, with his father serving as a senator, but was by no means influential. An energetic boy, Aurelius grew up in a stable situation, becoming a sponge and making sure to absorb as much knowledge as possible from his elders and teachers. This later turned him into a man of great character, which in turn reflected throughout his empire. The emperor at the time, Hadrian, took notice of this and became very fond of the young Aurelius. Because of the boy's impeccable character, Hadrian decided to name Aurelius Antoninus, Marcus' uncle-in-law, as his heir, on the condition that he selected the then too young Marcus as his eventual successor. Thus, Aurelius became emperor solely based on his exemplary character as a man. Commodus' ascension lies in direct contrast to his father. He was the only emperor in nearly 400 years to be born in the purple, meaning that he was the son of a previous emperor. In fact, the so-called five good emperors that preceded him had all been chosen as heirs because of their competence rather than their bloodline. This likely affected Commodus' childhood, as he was raised in lavish and luxurious circumstances. He did, however, receive extensive tutoring from a multitude of teachers with a focus on forming him into an intellectual. He did learn a lot, but when everything is given to you, you must never learn how to earn it. Beyond this, the fact that his father was emperor during wartime meant that Commodus likely never had a consistent father figure growing up. This, combined with his powerful position, meant that he never learned how to be a good, moral man, much less a good emperor. The influence of so many different men and without the stoic impact of his busy father, made Commodus a man easily swayed and influenced by others, as the historian Cassius Dio recalls. Commodus was not an inherently evil man, at least in his younger days, but a weak and cowardly one. There are numerous threads on Reddit discussing Stoicism's impact on Aurelius and Commodus. When Marcus Aurelius faced a civil war in 175 AD, he rushed Commodus through the stages required to be appointed co-emperor. One could say that Aurelius did not follow the Stoic principles in letting his fear of civil war take hasty and bad decisions. One could also argue that Commodus was the only possible option at the time, and that Marcus Aurelius had to make a decision to avoid an all-out war in the empire. Another Redditor writes, Commodus was Marcus Aurelius' only surviving son, 
All it means, if anything, is what we already know, that power exaggerates whatever trait a person already has. And no amount of teaching can make a bad person good. They have to want to improve. It must come from within. This influence on him led him down a dark and decadent path. While his father was away at war, Commodus spent a large part of his childhood in Rome, where it seems that his power and riches attracted mostly party animals and hedonists. Surrounding yourself with the wrong people when you're in such an important position, especially as someone easily influenced as Commodus, cannot end well. When Marcus Aurelius died on the Germanic front, Commodus was expected to stay with his troops to complete the campaign, and, to make sure this happened, his father placed Commodus in the care of his two most trusted generals, Pertinax and Pompeianus. However, he missed the pleasant life of the city, and under the pressure from his so-called friends, he ignored his general's pleas and paid massive bribes to his enemies to end the conflict, effectively undoing all that his father fought for in the last 14 years of his life. This was the true beginning of Commodus' depravity, for multiple reasons. For the first part, Commodus' abandonment of the war front had left him in an unpopular position with the army as well as the people. To remedy this, he held gladiatorial games and festivals, spent lavishly and made sure to portray himself as a god in human clothing. Going beyond this, Commodus was put in a tough spot the moment he was born. He was born in a city that was already falling to vice, holding near unlimited power and no checks on him as a child. A person that grows up in this environment has a slim to none chance of becoming a moral, disciplined man later on in life, however much education and training you give him. When we analyze most of the great leaders of history, Many of them were of relatively humble origins. Even Julius Caesar, the blueprint that the Roman emperors followed, came from a formerly great family in disrepair. So with no opportunity to rise from the bottom, Commodus sunk from the top to the lowest level of self-indulgence. To add on to this even more, some historians have asked the question that Stoicism itself led to Commodus' rejection of morals. Marcus Aurelius was a man intensely focused on his duties as emperor, rejecting many other areas of his life, one of these areas being his family. Being entrenched in war for most of his reign, he was forced to reject many parts of his duties as a parent, meaning that he had to leave the raising of his heir to others, sealing Commodus' downfall. There are many things to learn from the stories of Marcus Aurelius and Commodus. We must remember that every man is in control of his own fate, and circumstances cannot excuse all of a man's mistakes or successes. However, factors out of their control sent their lives down different paths, and the two men became opposites. If things had gone differently, perhaps we would not have viewed Commodus as an evil tyrant. Sadly, that did not come to pass. 